like, but what I've done with the kids here, um, what I did is I took some church camp songs that I did that were in public domain and I rewrote some of those as library songs. And so the first one is J is for Just Write Books. That's where the, the title comes from there. If y'all check the QR code, um, that will take you into a Google Drive folder that's full of all these songs, the puppet scripts, um, draw and tell, magic marker stories, all kinds of resources I just keep adding to, so you want to go back and visit that. There's some recordings of some of the songs too, with kids singing, and so um, things like that you might want to use. But thank y'all all for coming to check this out. Oops, let me back up. Well, it's the same thing. You sing you up there. And um, so while they're doing that, y'all can stand up here and um, show me how to make a letter J, and then a letter O, and then a letter Y. Now you got to be careful with the letter Y, okay? Here's why. Here's why. I did this. I did this for like for like a week, right? I'm out on car rider duty. J O Y J O Y. Did y'all see what I just did? I stuck the land so I wouldn't land on and slip and fall, which actually happened in one class um, on a Wednesday. And then I looked around at all the kids and, and the teachers had just come to class, right? And I'm doing this and I'm like, boys and girls, this is how you get yourself back up. Have a good week. Because um, I got a little carried away and tripped over my own two feet that day. But, um, yeah, make sure you're spelling the Y and not the X. And it goes like this. Wait, the little five minute up. All right, so there's my contact information um, on Twitter somewhat actively. Today, here's what we're going to do we'll do the music a little bit, we're going to talk puppets a little bit, story a little bit, and I'm going to try to save enough time at the end to share the library and blues. <laughs> Elementary library in blue. Because okay? um, I have that for y'all too. So, for the music, here we go. So you make the J, is for just rack books. O for open pages. Why, yeah, 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 to share the work with. Okay. Um, any game top fans in here? Woo! Woo! Right, so, this year, I, I added something new. I started using my Todd Ellis voice, okay? <laughs> so, like, whenever they're about to score, oh my goodness, the <laughs> Carolina! You know, that's what he does, right? <laughs> like a WWF announcer. So then I started talking about our library standards with the kids, and I'm like, it's a strong library word, include! And then I tell them the standard, because otherwise they're just closet. Right? <laughs> they don't care, but then now they know them. Because they look at me and they're like, "Strong library work." No. So he said, "For you and you and you and you and you and you, and you. like that." Um, with the thought Ellis voice, so if you, you want to do that, if you don't want to do that, participate <laughs> as you feel comfortable. Okay? But it goes, "J is for just right books, O for open pages, Y I I share the work with you and you and you and you and you and you and J is for just right books." Over open pages, why I share the work with you, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. This next part might sound familiar. I've got the joy of reading, joy of reading down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Kids will see me and they're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> what? Meaning joy, right? I'm gonna do this so Kipper can come And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the joy of reading in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the joy of reading.
so there's some other verses. Um, here was, let's see, joy of reading and something about searching for information. It's all in the Google Drive folder that we're applying on that. So this whole thing started really when I was about 16, helping out with the public ministry. We have a church. Um, the skits were bad. <laughs> So we rewrote some, and then I started learning to play guitar, and I learned some of this stuff at church camp, you know, which, okay, so I don't mention the church part when I'm teaching kids, because there's this law, and then they'll be like, my dad says that's a stupid law. It's like, okay, well, we're going to talk about laws another day, but we're just going to sing the song today. Um, fast forward 30 years, and I was at a workshop that Pat Feeney put on for USC. And she showed all this stuff. The magic marker story, she had a puppet, she had a storytelling, it was great. And then we had time to share stuff. So, all right, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna tell one. Let me show you what happened. All right. I need two people's names. Uh, let's see, Andrea and Jessica. All right, so Andrea and Jessica have a house on a hill. They're next door neighbors. <laughs> That's what happened. I froze up. I couldn't say a doggone thing. So, it was rough. Um, what I did is I actually bought the book, and the, the book that she used is in the resources here. Went home, practiced for a year, came back, and could tell the story. These stories with the magic markers are great because you got testing coming up, right? So probably, if you're like me, you're having to fill in for some time here and there, somewhat unpredictably. <laughs> Here's a magic marker. All right. So this one pairs with the John Bruchak story about fruit. And I can't say what kind of fruit, or I'll give it away. Um, but and I'll try to move so you all can see. Once, there was an old woman and a man, and they lived happily for many years of marriage in a house, in a valley. All right, he would go hunting all along the trails, and he would bring back food for them to eat. The whole time he was doing that, well, she had her job to do too. She was a gatherer, right? So she'd bring back nuts and berries and whatnot. Everything's going great. They're living in their nice little valley. So one day, she gets distracted by this most beautiful plant. It has some pretty, she got flowers on it, okay? She's never seen anything like it. So what does she do? She picks flowers and brings them home instead. All right, well, wouldn't it, you know it, that this happened to be the day that the husband killed nothing. I mean, nothing. And so he's tired, and he's hungry, he's hangry, and he's headed home from the mountaintop where he was hunting. All when he gets home, no food to eat. He yells at her, she yells at him, she storms off. She's gonna leave, she's not staying there anymore. Okay. After a little while, the guy picks his jaw up off the floor, decides he's gonna chase after her. Well, she's pretty quick, so she gets ahead of him. His friend, the sun guy, helps him out. Sends down some berries that are blue to distract her. Slow her down. She doesn't care. She's mad. Keep still. Well, the fellow's in pretty good connection with this sun god, I guess, because he sends down another kind of berries. These were black berries. But she is not interested in that at all. And so, He's in a real fix. He's trying to go faster. All of a sudden, though, one more try from his helper there, he sent down a different kind of flower, different kind of berry. It smells so sweet. And she loves it. She eats it. She stops. He comes and finds her. She loves him and shares it with her. They make up, and they decide that they need to take all of those berries back with them and the plants so they can start their own garden. 
or strawberry. That's in there with um, step by step and the pictures of how to do it. And what I did is I read the story, right? And then I just sat around and sort of looked at different illustrations people had done. Okay, what does this do? What does that do? And then just kind of drew it up and put it together. So I realize I'm going out of order from what the slides say, but I wanted to show you all this one first. Um, and you can color it in or whatever. The kids love it, though. And the thing that I'm trying to do now is also pair this with teaching standards. So what are some teaching standards you think you could pull in with strawberries or anything of that? Okay. Um, maybe sequencing, cause and effect. You don't want to do it the kids. Um, the kids, the, the kids usually are just watching, but then of course they all want to do them, and then they want to present them. So my big idea is that what I basically want to do is have the fourth graders take a fact take an image and make their story and share it with the second grade. Because they all want to do them for me. And what I found during the pandemic when I would do these is I did one about a vampire jack-o'-lantern and a bat and bats in an echo location. And a kid watched it in kindergarten and then the next year he could just sit there and draw me the whole thing and tell me all about echo location and the standards and the content is here and he's down here and he knows it all because he knows the story. So if you're embedding the content into your story, it has beef to it. When the administrator's like, why are you drawing pictures like that? That's not enough rigor. Well, you just added some. And it's all the sequencing and the storytelling too, so they're doing that creative expression. It all just intertwines. So that is a draw and tell or a magic marker story. It's not like the call of the <clears throat> So Pat Feehan used to teach at USC. I never had her. She uh, had retired by the time I came along. But that quote about things you learn with joy you remember forever really stuck with me. And I had no idea when I had COVID this fall, and I sat home and figured out this J's for Just Right Books thing, that Donovan Miller, was the, the buzzword was going to be reading joy, right? Right when I did the reading joy song. So it all just fits so well. Okay, but here's the thing. Should we use it? Because I did a really cool one called Read Us a Book, You're the Library Man, to the Tina Mr. Piano Man, and Elton John's people have not called. <laughs> so, so I don't ever use that one. Uh, but it was but it's pretty read us a book, you're the library man, use all the voices you like. You know, because we've all come here for a story time. Because it leaves us feeling alright. And it kept going. And so, many email conversations with Valerie Bird for later, I realized. All right, I can't play it on guitar, but if I bought a karaoke track and keyed it up and all that, probably would I can on parody. But I don't know. In this case, though, the lyrics were written in the 1920s to I've Got the Joy Down in My Heart. And I verified it a couple different ways. So here we go. Lateral reading, right? Verify your sources. Plagiarism, copyright. That was my lesson during the book fair when I'm there joking around like a camp counselor, but then they're learning all this stuff too. Sneaky teacher trip, right? Okay, those joy motions, they help the, I guess they call them kinesthetes now, they used to call them kinesthetic learners when I was coming through school. The ones who've got to be moving, all right? This is, this is their jam. And wear, <laughs> wear good shoes when you jump and dance around, because uh, if not, you may slip like I did. All right, now, on to the puppets, y'all. And I may go kind of fast. I know the time goes pretty quickly when you start switching back and forth between things like this, which also is an advantage to using it. Um, I don't always have the puppet every class. I don't always have a guitar every class. Usually pre-K is going to get some version of both, but maybe not always. And so we... Um, We've been doing this for a while now. Are you going to tell him about the sock? The what? The sock. I never quite know what he's going to say. Um, during COVID, I couldn't use the puppets because the nurse said that's like a vector born transmission. Kids would be touching it, swapping germs. We couldn't do it. And so my eyes get 
ginormous. Uh, what am I going to do for pre-K or kindergarten, you know? And, um, and so we come up with a solution that really, when we came up with a solution, it was a sock puppet. So I made a sock puppet. And then I made four more. And I quarantined. And I washed them in the washing machine every day. And if I did that, and I was washing and drying the sock puppet and wrote, I named them all Daniel, just like George Foreman named all his kids George, so I can get this straight, right? And, and so, so Daniel the puppet was, was the one that they still ask me about. It. Where's Daniel? And you told him. I did tell him, unfortunately, I told him. He was at a magnet school for sock puppets. And so now, you know what they're wanting. Is he going to FaceTime? Oh, brother. So, I don't know. But this is Willie. Willie Puppet. And are you going to allow me to introduce myself? I guess so. So, um, hey, we were on the radio. We were on the radio during the, the pandemic. And y'all may have seen him in the Scouts on Messenger, too. I uh, recorded books and read alouds on the Facebook Messenger site and um, folks could just tune in when we had all the copyright exemptions and all that and they became pretty popular he and his brother um who couldn't be here today yeah that's what he's not here today that's right he couldn't get out of school like you so i'm at two schools i'm at ribbon elementary where we have eagle eye eddie and i'm at whitmire community school where we have willie and so um i have to keep that straight too uh, but we'll get in more with the puppetry in a little bit. Yeah, we can tell them. Oh, tell them about. I like. Can I? Can I rap? Can you what? Rap. Okay. I like to read books. Read books. Read books. I like to read books. Read books. Read books. I like to read the books on my bedside table. I spell out the words when I'm able. Woo. <laughs> that was on the radio. <laughs> Made it up during COVID. <laughs> and then we had a friend of mine had a local AM station and we, we shared a lot of library stuff trying to encourage literacy and reading during that time so but the puppets alright don't let puppetry give you the willies unless you think about this guy it's not as scary as you might think um So, if you're totally new to it, <clears throat> I got this parrot that's got a sweet parrot <coughs> my niece named Carrot Parrot. She always wants me to talk, to have Carrot Parrot whisper in my ear. You can just have a squeaky animal whisper in your ear and tell them what they say. So you don't have to time it out. And, I mean, I may not have the, the mouth time quite right. You know, Fred Rogers did all this stuff and the mouse didn't even move on his. People said he did all the TV stuff with success by doing all the stuff and doing it badly and he did it wrong and somehow it worked. I don't know, but it, it did, you know. So when I first started doing this, I was like, oh, this is not good. I'm not a ventriloquist, right? You gotta be a ventriloquist or the kids won't buy into the illusion. Then we had a guy come to our school who was a puppeteer. Yeah, and so he would talk. And he would do that, right? And the kids didn't care. And what I found was you fall, you, you fall right into the illusion. Well, then what happens is they go back to the class, pre-K, kindergarten, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna get that stuffed animal out, they're gonna get their book, yeah. and they're gonna sit and they're gonna be like me. Yeah. And they're gonna read. And they're gonna read to one another. And they're gonna have that experience of loving the book. And it fits right in there. So you can share jokes. I mean, to give you some material. A good way to start, though, what we did is we started, so let's say you have, um, I don't know, all about them books, buy them books, no trouble. And you can play the song, right? And the kids are singing and dancing, or you play, play a, a, a go move, and just mouth along. You don't have to do anything. Just have the book and dance and mouth and say, bye. That's it. Till you get your confidence right, till you get used to doing it, seeing everybody, and get into a flow. Because you just want to appear, it's almost like it's spelling a Harry Potter Patronus with classroom management, right? You just want to appear in control of everything. <laughs> Least little bit of wiggle, and it just can be, well, bad news bears. Yeah, bad news bears is a good one, I thought. Um, 
So, here's the thing. It does help with classroom management. I have like a little storage item sitting next to me, all right? So if the kids are too loud, oh, I hate the loudness. I know. What do you do when they're too loud? Oh, that's when I have to leave. And he does. And oh, oh Willie Buffett's about to go with the thing. <laughs> they're on my list. They, <laughs> they don't see the, the reading joy as much <laughs> at that point. It's still in here, but, you know. So, all right, here's the other thing, though. Anytime you're doing any of this creative stuff, I bounce all these ideas off my wife, my brother, teachers in the building, because you want to, friends from library school, Miriam back there has been a good sounding board, too, characters dressing up as whatever. You want to avoid stereotypes. You want to avoid um, poking bears and making people mad without intending to. And sometimes you get a big creative burst and you may decide what's really good um, would work and it won't. So, um, like I have a doctor who's East Indian and I can talk like he talks, but I would never do a video that way. I wouldn't even record myself on this thing just showing you, see, I can do it because I don't want to risk somebody thinking I'm doing something that could be considered racist. The reason I'm pointing this out it's come up in a lot of the other meetings and stuff that we've been in. It's a tough time to be a librarian right now. And you don't want to give anybody any ammunition more than what they're already kind of coming up with, with the book objections. And here's a sobering thought. Um, I'm going to lay that out and then we'll get to some fun stuff, all right? The sobering thought is this. Um, and maybe it's just me, but the Moms for Liberty groups, they can try to get us on the court of public opinion and banning books and using us of this and that and social media. But they really want to get at us where it has teeth. Start looking at our word for copyright, trademark violations. If I put the wrong song up there and it's an Elton John song, guess what? All they have to do, or God forbid, is the mouse. You know, anything Disney. If I did something Disney, and then they go tell Disney, and Disney's just a district. And then I'm unethical. And then the whole snowball just rolls and it's got teeth. I'm not saying that to keep you up at night. It's just that I had a really good, did any of y'all know Donna Hagen? All right, she was a mentor librarian of mine and she was a real stickler for this copyright stuff. And I'm so glad that she made me do it. Slow down and do it. Um, if not, we're just putting ourselves at risk in a way that is not helping. Okay, so there's one kid at Whitmire that I teach. He's got, bless his heart, love, love him to death. He's in second grade, and uh, he's got a subscription of issues because he's just got so many things he's dealing with. I never know what's coming in the library, right, when he comes in. But if I have Willie, and Willie sits at the table next to him, it's a different child. He'll talk to Willie. He'll do whatever activity. He'll share it with Willie, the whole bit. Not every time, but probably two times out of three. And they kind of resemble each other. Um, so representation matters. My aunt gave me Willie whenever I graduated library school, and she was, she was adamant about that. And the more I've done this job, the more I see she's right, because I see how the kids react to it. Where does he get all this? I kind of touched on that a little bit before. All right, we've done the draw and tell story. This is a great resource. It's the one Pat Bean showed me. It's out of print. If you put it in your collection, it's going to make your age so old. But if you can find it, <laughs> if you can find it on um, Amazon, draw and tell. And again, all this is in the slides and the folders. Um, there are a couple people share them for free online. Again, all right, just because I share it for free online, I might be taking it out of a book that someone else has copyrighted. So just because it's there, try to be careful. I try to be really particular which ones I put in there. But y'all have a folder full of probably five or six of those. Some of them are videos of other librarians you can just play and let the kids try it. Let the kids do it. Show it to your art teacher. That is the one that I told you about, the um, jack o -Lantern. And then here are a couple more resources uh, for the draw and tell stories. 
That's our corgi, Lola, when she was helping me draw the strawberry <coughs> one. So she's there looking at, the, at that. All right, so what you're trying to do is set this tone and mood of joyful reading. Because everybody, I hope, somewhere has a fun memory from childhood or something. That's a touchstone of enjoying a story, enjoying a movie, enjoying a song, something. And if we can get people to do that. We've been talking about in the speech today, in the keynote speech, she said about, you know, um, building connections and relationships. If we can get them back to that, maybe we can dial the temperature back in the room just a little. I'm not going to say it's going to fix everything, but at least then maybe people will remember we're not the bad guys here. All right, I've said a lot, and I've said a lot quickly. Does anybody have questions or um, comments? I want to make sure we have time for library blue, but I also want to hear from y'all. All right, so I did a library swag video. I'm going to show you just a tiny little bit of that. Back in the fall, Shane Beamer made a lot of press for doing mm -hmm. a re redo of Soldier Boy at the, at the SEC Media Days. And so, we got inspired. Yes, we did. <laughs> and uh, it will not play. It's in the file. All right. Sorry for false advertising. It's in the files. Y'all can see it. Um, I don't know why the link is not linked, but that's okay. She's like, the kids are off the chain. <laughs> well, sometimes I take that with a grain of salt, right? But this day they were 10 minutes late. Now, five minutes late means potty break. 10 minutes late means off the chain. <laughs> so, circled around on the carpet, lesson plan just went out the window, and here's what we did instead. We did um, a song that was based on I've got so much, so much to be thankful for it became, we've got some favorite books that became. We, it became, it became, we've got our favorite books to be thankful for, and I was going to show you that. back 
over what holds one to the other, it's the spine. <laughs> so I wanted to show you a little sample of that one. There is way more information on those slides and way more stuff in those folders than I probably should have been there. First time doing one of these, so I was a little excited and put a lot of stuff in there. Um, so don't get intimidated by whatever. If you got questions about anything, let me know. But I want to share with y'all this one and then have some time for some questions and answers. And Music's right here. It's, in, it's new. The library blues thing is new. I just wrote it. You know, right off the get the words. I don't have the phone. All right. Here we go. Don't dock on stage present point too much. i 
situation, your mother dad gone. They say, is that a curse word? I say, no, where I'm from. <laughs>
Okay, yeah. So that's a good question, y'all. She wanted to know, do I ever try to change puppets in front of the kids or whatever? Well, yeah. At, at Ruben, it's just me. I don't, there's no assistant. It's, I'm just doing it all. So they know I'm the guy running the puppet. Um, they also know the puppet is shy and they can't touch the puppet. And so it, it works better if they just know. And, and sometimes the kid will try to be smart. He thinks you. I know. You're my puppeteer, man. And we make a partnership, too. Big time. Yeah, big time. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't mind changing those. If I'm dressed in a costume, I really try to avoid like changing a costume in front of the kid. But puppets, we switch out. <laughs> no, we got about three minutes left. No. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Y'all hey, remember Walt McLeod, representative from Newberry County? He used to represent the House of Representatives, maybe not. All right, when I was a newspaper reporter, I learned an impression of him. So I do a character called Mr. Wordsworth, Mr. Adolphus Wordsworth. And, uh, Okay, so he talks this way right here. Oh my and it God. sounds a lot like Mr. Walt. And one day they're going to meet. Because he would tell me my composition skills were excellent when I was with the paper. So, <laughs> so there's that one. Um, there's drill sergeant. That is yeah. him. That is so him. Yeah. I'll dress up. Um, just like one. Wow. Um, usually for the whole day. <laughs> but here recently I had to do, because I had, I had laryngitis as a Day. Um, I had to use nervous rain the whole time to teach, and, and I had to change out of like I was doing a leprechaun thing and I had to change and just do it for two classes. So, kind of have to play it by ear. Anybody else? And, you have all around elementary gloves and stuff too.